So after we've added the status filter rule, uh, we go to the same uh, zip file here from the download. We put the WinPE generator, copy that, and put that on the hard drive here. And since that is a command line tool, we have to use the command line prompt. Uh, navigate to our uh, x64 folder. Uh, the server that we're running on is an x64, so that's why we use that one. If, if we were running it on a 32-bit, the 32-bit command line tool could still generate 64-bit images, so it's just to match the, the uh, operating system that we run from. If we run the tool without any command line, uh, it will give us an example, so we need to give it a source image, which is the form of a WIM file, and also a destination boot file that we need to put in. So let's give it the path to our full 64-bit uh, enterprise image. Uh, this version requires enterprise media to be used. Um, we have to specify which image index as well. If you have uh, spaces in your path, you make sure that you use quotes around that one. So otherwise it, the command line will fail. And then we're going to take a boot image. We'll copy the default one from the configuration manager installation. Um, that's just the pristine Claire boot image so we copy that create a new base image that will be the package source for our boot image give it a name like branch cache uh, winp x64 or something like that put the actual bootloader in there so we got our boot in there make sure we copy that path and then we feed that as the destination path to the generator and same again, if you've got spaces in the path, make sure we put quotes around it. Then we're kind of ready to go, ready to hit enter. So um, that's the command line that we're going to use. Uh, once we press enter, off the command line goes, generates temporary files, mounts the images. So it can take a while. This uh, video has been edited a little bit to make it look like it's going a little bit quicker. If you think that it's running very fast, that's why. So after we've mounted them, it will transfer all the files and register keys and whatever is needed to get branch cache going. And after that, it's then generating the updated boot win and closing down the images itself. So it should go pretty smooth on from here. So let me see I'm loading the sample or the source WIM here. So if everything works fine, you'll see a um, command ending saying the image successfully created and then if we look at our boot whim you can see that it's, the dates modified has changed and it's a slightly bigger one than we had before so let's go to our configuration manager console add a new boot image give it the unc path to the folder that we were created it in of course you can generate the file on a different server and then transfer it if you want to you don't have to create it on your configuration manager server. Give the boot image a name, like branch cache name, enabled WinP or whatever that you actually want to name it. Make sure you, you put the architecture in the name so you, when you later select it, you can see which architecture it is from the drop down menus. And off it goes to create this WIM file. So um, we don't do too many changes to the WIM file itself. And you will be able to see that uh, the config manager adds even more things to it than we do. So the file, so the file size, I'll show you later when we create the x86 one, is that the file size is, I think it's about, we're adding about six megabyte of content. So it's not too much to, uh, to not too great increase of the size of the image. Here it's the wizards completed successfully and we should be able to see that we have a good WIM file and you can see that they got the config manager version in there as well. So let's do the same thing for the x86 image, give it a proper name to match the other one. Then we go and get our configuration manager boot image, which is basically just the default WIMP one. We could have copied another one from the from the Windows deployment kit if we wanted to as well. It would be exactly the same thing. And we paste it in there. And then we see that we have a x86 image that we want to use. So let's go 
take the same command line that we had before, change it a little bit, move all of the x64 to x86 path. We should have a few of those, both for the source and for the image itself. So I think that's the last one. No, there's one for the boot image as well, x86. And let's see how that goes. As you can see, uh, it failed and it returns that uh, you cannot find the right files path. So we have to make sure that the, the paths are okay. So as I did before, it's better to actually copy and paste the, um, the source files because, or the source, the paths to the files. It's very easy to make um, mistakes. Like you see here, if I try to type it in again, I, my memory is so so bad that I can't even remember that it started with x86. So I'm gonna have to go back again, see, oh yeah, it's an x86 in front of it. So it's quite easy to uh, make mistakes on this. And in the beta, we didn't check for um, the right ar architecture for the images, but we realized quite quickly that uh, it's easy to make mistakes and the results are bad if you mix match x86 and x64. So the image goes and basically creates and we should see a pretty good progress here.